Thanks for staying with us. Now, remember, tonight's show is geared towards corporate social responsibility, right? We're doing a lot of giveaway starting from tonight and all the way to God helps us. <laughs> and five lucky winners tonight will get the, to have their cases handled pro bono courtesy of our guest, Manny Money. Now, innocent people have been wrongly accused and jailed in prisons all over the world. And that's why we are having this conversation today. We will be discussing prison reforms, right? We're shining the spotlights on the prisons and the prisoners and we're, how we can make things better in Nigerian prison system and also help five people that have been wrongfully jailed come out of their prisons. Now, in case you do not know, Emanuela OJ, fondly called Money Money, is a dynamic lawyer who is currently the founder of and managing partner of um, Manifield Solicitors, a law firm based in Nigeria, which has branches in Lagos, Abuja, and Benin City. Her practice focuses on complex and civil litigation corporate and commercial practice, intellectual property, telecommunications, and real estate law. Mani founded the BITS in April of 2017, and her vision is to bring about developmental change to inmates and ex-inmates by reaching out to different correctional facilities through strategic intervention. Now, she has de developed um, innovative methods and solutions in tackling issues such as illiteracy, mental poverty, soul and spirit development. Now, BITS, or we call it BITS, is an acronym for Bringing in the Shifts by Manny. Um, since inception, the BITS Foundation Empowerment Program has provided food, clothing, toiletries, daily supplies, educational grants, pro bono um, legal services, career skills training, business and entrepreneurial development training, and equipping um, vocational skills training, supernatural upliftment, counseling and mentoring, as well as post-training follow-up to release inmates, thus ensuring long-term solutions to the challenges of crime, unemployment, lack of marketable skills, and illiteracy. So it is a lot. If you understand you know what happens in the prisons then you would know that she's actually doing a lot in despair and she is live with us in studio hello money money so i have reintroduced you to our audience <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying to be serious. you're trying to be serious your right? today. <laughs> but thank you so much for all you do and thank you first of all for accepting to be our very first guest on this um Wednesday uh, giveaways that we are starting off and kicking it off officially today right so um let's talk prisons and prisoners right let's shine a little bit of spotlight on them um currently do we even understand the numbers do we understand you know what it is like you know just getting someone arrested and the next thing the person finds themselves in uh, or him or herself in prison what is it like i, I mean the nigerian um, system when it comes to prisons Okay, so when it comes to prisons, um, an individual is supposed to be arrested or when the individual is arrested, they are supposed to be charged to court and then granted bail, then they are released. If they are not granted bail, then they are held back in prisons. So we have our criminal justice system is um, operates under the principle of um, innocent until proven guilty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we have a major problem with that in Nigeria. Um, that is what... Um, made me started to look into the prisons and try to see how I can help the prisoners because we have this, the whole practice backwards in Nigeria. So here you see where an individual is um, already um, convicted. convicted or termed as guilty. Meanwhile, it's the duty of the prosecutor, you know, to try to prove the um, individual guilty, mm. but he's presumed innocent first. Well, we have it backwards and because of this a lot of people are suffering in prisons in our prisons so we have people that have been locked up for loitering for two years wow for five years yes for loitering for loitering yes what does that even mean <laughs> you know sometimes we have these um patrol um trucks go around lagos just trying to pick people so it's not just in lagos i think it's in every part of nigeria, nigeria. yes so we have this they they make it a habit of picking taking people off the streets and locking them up and some of them because they cannot afford to bribe because this all those things are done in the yes. beach to bribe 
Yes, the, most of the, the time, because, yes, they have to come to build themselves mm. and they're not going to build themselves for free. Mm. You know, so they do the police officer do, do they do these things for different reasons. I don't even want to go into that. So for for me, my work is to go in there and try to get the innocent out, you know, try to help them. But I want to have an sorry, I, I want mm -hmm. to just quickly mm -hmm. follow up on me, then I'll let Isi come in. What is the average cost of even that bill, the process? Like is it that expensive that I mean if you're I'm assuming this is me talking from a layman's perspective that if I'm guilty for loitering I'm sure my bailing fees should not be as high as somebody that's that's charged with murder or something. Shouldn't you know? Yes, but shouldn't it be affordable? Yes. How, ex how expensive is Ooh, it? Uh, when you talk about affordability, mm. it depends relative. on the class of people. Mm. You understand? It's relative. So um, some prisoners have been in prison for three years because they could not afford fifty thousand bail. Wow. Oh yes, we have them. We have a lot of them. So it's not about the amount most of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So because they can't afford the bill, they can't afford legal representation, they tend to stay in prisons longer than they are supposed to. Yeah. So that's where we come in. Okay. So if I may step in, um, my, the, when you talked about law terrain, I actually remembered uh, when my husband and I were still courting and uh, the police actually, we went clubbing one night and the police actually stopped us for, uh, and said that they were arresting us for wandering. And it was so strange to me, but now that you said it, I think it's a, it's a normal occurrence with them. So yes, but my attention is actually drawn to um, children because there have been cases of juveniles actually being, um, uh, uh, being arrested and left in the prison cells to, you know, to wallow in that condition what is your take on that mm. okay so i'm not going to mention prisons because i go to different prisons in lagos yes but i was in one of them about two weeks or three weeks ago and i saw juveniles in my classroom wow. you know so when you see them they look like babies it's not the usual practice they are not supposed no they shouldn't be there so we have juvenile courts we have juvenile cells where they're supposed to hold them back, mm -hmm. punish them, whatever punishment, you know, um, they, 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 deemed, um, they, they deserve. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But in this case, they just throw them in. So is it because mm. of the prisons that we do not have enough spaces for prisons or the government is not just thinking of probably creating another facility that can at least hold mm -hmm. the younger, um, the juveniles, I mean, hold them there? Because I know that in Kaduna State, for instance, there was a particular place, I can't remember the name now, when one of my um, cousins that was living with us started acting funny, they took him there. I think it's Boaster College or something. It is for correcting young boys, right, that are going into, uh, what's it called? That are, go that are probably like acting, maybe they have all this truancy behavior and all of that. They correct you. They don't take you to prisons. You know, what you do there is, you know, you do all the cutting of grasses, do, do all, like they do, then they do, it's of course. A mind facility. Yes, it's a correctional facility. Is it mm -hmm. that we do not have those correctional fa facilities anymore in Nigeria? Why they would now carry, you know, juveniles and put them alongside, you know, hardened criminals? Okay, the truth is um, we don't have enough of them. Okay. So with the rates at which things are turning around in Nigeria, the crime rate has also increased. Escalated. Yes, it has escalated. Whether you like it or not, it has increased. So most of these prison cells were built, you know, during the colonial era. Hmm. And they were built to accommodate about 50 people in a cell. Hmm. So right now we have these issues with overcrowded cells because they are turning them in by the second so and nobody's nobody's going out. Everybody's just coming in and staying. Can you give us an, a rough idea of how many stays in a cell, like right now? If you say it was built for fifty, what what are you facing when you get to the I, cell? I can only give you a rough idea because I've not been inside their cell. Mm -hmm. So, but from what I've heard, you know, most of the people say is a cell for fifty now accommodates about 200. maybe hundred, one fifty, and they are supposed to do everything inside the cell. You. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so it's a terrible situation, but it even goes beyond um, the number of people in a cell. It goes, you know, it also affects what they eat. Hmm. Yeah. 
it affects you know it affects everything remember what you just said is you said they're supposed to be correctional facilities Absolutely. these are actually reform centers they are supposed to go in then they assess them why did you commit the crime that you committed you know they look at them and then try to help them because it's a reformational facility mm. but there no, no reformation is being done there they're not being reformed so, so let me let me let me down. I, I know that the, the lady that mm. actually committed murder or is stated to have committed murder, mm -hmm. um, she's yet to be, um, what's the word now, to be uh, convicted. Sorry. convicted. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. She's yet to be convicted. However, she's in a facility currently and she hasn't been granted bail. Do you think that is that's right? The yes, that's it. I didn't want to call names. Now, do you think that is right? Then secondly, do you think that there's a difference between the male facility and the female facility? Is there a difference? Is there, there are they better treated? Because I know that she actually did some sort of uh, beauty, beauty pageant, pageant. To, you know, mm -hmm. then. Yes, I know. Well, such back. a serious a ruckus, yes. Ruckus, yes. Yeah. Okay, so to answer the second question first, is there a difference between a male and a female? There's really no difference. It's just that the female cell houses females and the male cell house the male. So there's no difference. They're so just they are basically, same yes, it's the same, same things yeah. that the men suffer that the women suffer. It's exactly the same thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, for your other question, Chidima, why is she being held back? Yes. Is that your question? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the investigation is still ongoing. They have not concluded. It's not conclusive yet. So she has to be there till it's conclusive. If they feel that she's a threat, then she will not be granted bail. It's okay in most cases, yes. You don't, especially in the murder case. Yeah, so, so it's legal for them to oh, hold yes. that down. Oh, yes. So I was okay. going to say that because, again, it seems like people don't understand why we have overcrowded prisons. Because I heard stories around mm -hmm. uh, possession of cannabis for personal use, mm -hmm. um, simple assault, maybe you fought, you know, simple assault, mm -hmm. petty theft, mm -hmm. you know, um, traffic oh. violation, you know, reckless driving, vandalism. Right, you know, these are supposed to be misdemeanor. misdemeanor. Yeah. So you know, and we, I hear that we have a lot of people currently in prison because of these cases. You know, so what? How do we even start to at look least even into. yes look into those cases that we know that these are supposed to be petty things? Because mm -hmm. what you're doing, leaving those people with hardened criminals, is that not even more dangerous to the society? Because they begin to mix, they rob minds, you know, and all of that. Yes, well, I feel you, and um, it's something that actually also worries me. Because you have people who have done, like you said, petty crimes. They've committed petty crimes, but they have to stay in the same cells with people that have committed murder, you know, high theft, you know and then they learn a thing or two. So they come out of the system worse than how they went, went in. in. Mm. Yes, so most of the time it actually doesn't make sense, but it goes beyond the prison system. It goes into the uh, um, judicial system. Mm. Our courts are tight. Mm. You know, you have a, a matter in court, they are supposed to, they're supposed to take maybe basically a month. It takes three years because they continue to adjourn the matters. Mm. So we have, um, this issue with the NSAS and they burn down our high court. So now we are constrained. We don't have enough courts to even sit to hear matters. You know, so I, I think the system, our problem in Nigeria is a lot and it's affecting our judicial system. So the judicial system on a good day is supposed to be one of the, you know, most important systems in Nigeria. But because of all these factors that I've called and even much more the judicial system suffers and therefore justice also is so delayed how? and in some cases denied mm. so how do we die? you know i was going mm, bef bef reform? before we yes. even go into <laughs> before we even go into reform i want to ask what beats is about right okay. the, yes because you see mm. it's important we now bring it home to why we're even discussing and shining yeah. the spotlight yeah. on yeah. our own prison what exactly do you do with bits you know um Bring it. What's the full acronym again? Bringing in the sheaves. Bringing, Bringing in, the, in sheaves the sheaves. Yes. What money. do you do with bits? You know, with prisoners. Okay. So. Um, and why did you tag them as sheep? Sheaves. Oh, sheaves. Yes, oh, not really? sheep. Yeah. yeah okay. So it's sheaves. a term that I yeah, from got the from the Bible. Yeah. So sheaves is like harvest bring in the souls. Yes, I know. So yeah, bits, like you said, is an acronym for mm. bringing in the sheaves. 
by money. Yeah. So this is um, an organization that helps prisoners. So it's a prison outreach. So like you said, we um, started doing this like six years ago, 2017, and I started this just to help the prisoners. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we go there every week. We go there every Thursday. So Thursdays is our day. We go there every Thursdays. We feed them like with food, real food. Mm. We also then we have some pictures. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so we also um, help them pro bono services as well because most of them have been there for years and they can't afford legal reps. Mm. So yeah. what we do is we represent them. So we just take them like ten at a time. You know, if we have space, we take twenty and we just help them. We, we, we try to look for petty crimes so that we are, we're doing them as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. We also buy things for them. We buy them their normal toiletries, their soaps, their sponges, sleepers. Um, we buy underwear, like um, for the men, we buy yeah. their boxer shorts, we buy singlets for women, you know, the inner vest. We also help them with education hmm. so we pay for jam forms we pay for gc forms we sponsor them we, we buy computers for them because there are some of them that are learning how to fix computers so you must buy them enough computers to be able to dismantle and learn hmm. yeah so we have some of them that are learning different um skill traits Sets. yes like vocational skills yeah. so they are learning how to paint they're learning how to bake you know, catering, they're learning how to um, do carpentry work. They're learning a lot of things there, and we sponsor them, so we pay for them. What mm -hmm. are your success stories? Oh, we have a lot of success stories. So there's because one that is really... Yes, there's, there's a guy that is really close to my heart. I chat with him every other day. So he was convicted for murder, mm. yeah, because he was part of a cult, you know, but somehow he got out early. And since he got out, he started his schooling in prison cell and he came out, he's been able to continue schooling, he's been able to open a barber's shop, he's been able to, um, he sells popcorn as well, so he goes to schools, different schools to sell popcorn mm -hmm. to them and he's doing very well. So not just that, he's fully reformed, so we still have some good success stories coming out of the prison, even if we know that there are... <clears throat> There's every tendency. Yes. You know, I was listening yes. to, interestingly, I found a video mm -hmm. this morning, because every morning what I do now is that I try to take out about 30 minutes or 40 minutes of my time, okay. just listen to a motivational story and find a way to um, relate it. And okay. the interesting st uh, video that I found today was, was the guy that became a millionaire. Well, guess what? He started off with crime, you know, and he's been to prison. You know, so it was while he was in prison, mm. what you're talking about when you fight in prison, that he, was, he fought for four hours straight. They had to take him to the solitary isolation and all of that. He so met a white, yeah, co solitary confinement. He now met a white guy there. This is a, a black man. He w met a white guy there that started, you know, talking about like investments and all of that. And, you know, right in prison there. Because I, I couldn't understand how you do business in prison, but I was listening to him, you know, and he was talking about how he would tell the inmates that because their clothes were usually really dirty. You tell them, I'll wash your clothes, you know, for $25 a month. <laughs> so he started getting a lot of business there. So he did a lot of good things and he was able to leave the prison cell only for him to be caught again, you know, for trying to, uh, I think, robbery or something. But for some reason, he was spared. God just wanted mm -hmm. him to be a success story. And now... He he's teaches well. he teaches business, you know, teaches people how to invest in stocks and all, and he's doing exceptionally well. You know, he tells people you can become a millionaire if you understand. So he so when when you say things like this, I'm just wondering, right, how we can begin to translate because if you if you say there are businesses, there are vocational skills, is it mm -hmm. translating into income for them while they're in prison? But you know what? You don't say that. <laughs> Let's take a quick break. Okay. <laughs> we'll be right back. All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tune in, is our Ways 
giveaway Wednesday and we're shining the spotlight on prisoners and we have Manny OJ we call her Manny Money and um, please let's hear what you have to say remember you can join the conversation send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 so just in case you're trying to wonder what we're going to be giving out today watch this clip So it's fastest fingers. So in case you know someone that has been in prison and, you know, there's no, you know, the person cannot, cannot afford, you know, a bail and all of that. We're looking for cases like we just mentioned, the misdemeanor cases. But, you know, before we went on a break, uh, Manny, first of all, thank you. <laughs> we know that we can increase that slot to maybe like 50, <laughs> but we are starting with five first. <laughs> Let's not overwork Manny because she already has a lot on her plate, right? <laughs> But, you know, so before we went on a break, I was saying that how can we translate the vocational skills and all of that that they are learning in prison? How can we translate that into, you know, because it's very easy if they are not probably earning a decent mm -hmm. income to go back to crime, right? Especially those that are like petty thieves, you know, or people that probably go to do sell drugs mm -hmm. for a living, you know. You also, if they are caught, they would arrest them and all of that. So mm -hmm. how do we ensure that, you know, that income is sustainable? Okay, so remember, I said that alongside the pro bono services, we also offer career skills training, business training, entrepreneurial training, yeah. and um, vocational skills training. So what we do is we know that these ones are going to leave the prison one day and go out. So we help them to, you know, go into the... Prepare for the real prepare, world. We prepare them for the real world so that their um, entrance into the world will be seamless. Seamless. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what we do is we help them, teach them about business. We give them money. So I sponsor a lot of people in the prison. Yes, I give them money to do business. So they have different types of business, businesses, I'll tell you. Like I told you, some of them learn catering. So they bake cakes, they bake, they make chin chin, they make donuts and different things. And Ladies they sell, or the guys? Even the guys and the ladies wow. as well. Yes, I told you it's the same thing that applies yeah. here and also applies there. I want a clarification. So, yes, no, both guys bake as well. They do a lot of things. So what they do is they make these things and they sell them there. Mm -hmm. Yes, so they sell them. People buy from them. There are also people who fry beef, peppered beef, peppered sauce. And they sell them. There are some people that make rice and So I don't stew. understand. So <laughs> prisoners are allowed to have bank accounts or what? How do they keep the money? <laughs> no, I'm just you know, because I'm I've never been in Ooh, touch uh, with like any you, prison. You're beginning to ask me questions that <laughs> has no nothing to, to do with what I'm doing. Right. Right? I I don't care about their bank accounts and how they do that business behind mm. the scene. But what I do is I help just them. give them the skill. Yes, give them the skill. Teach mm. them how to do business. Teach them what business the is. Principles. Teach them the principles. Teach them how to make money. Mm. So that because guess what. Most of them that are in prison have wives and children outside. Wow. Oh. oh, yes. Most of them were married. Most of them that were not married have mothers, mm. parents, you understand, outside. They have to give any money. They, life continues for them. So we help them to learn different skills, you know, so that when they come out into the world, the integration will be it's seamless. seamless. Mm. Yes. So that's how they do business. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I have plenty of questions. Well, let me let mm -hmm. uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so before I go, I would say that you're doing a fantastic job. Thank You've you. You've done so well. But I want to understand something. Is it um, just uh, because when I was introducing you, she talked about the fact that you do it in Benin, Abuja, and Lagos. So can you throw more light on that the location the locations where okay you go to. um my law firm so now let me differentiate between these two entities yeah. there's manifield solicitors the law firm there's beats by money the prison outreach mm -hmm. so what happens with them is we're talking about csr mm -hmm. you know our social corporate responsibility so um manifield solicitors now does their csr with 
um, bits by money. They partner with bits by money. That's how we can represent the inmates pro bono. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so Manifield Solicitors has branches in Lagos, in Benin, and in Abuja. Okay. But Beat by Money runs this prison outreach only okay. in Lagos and in Enugu. Oh, yes, okay. for now. So we're okay. looking at going into Benin and you know, then other parts. But this thing looks so seamless and interesting. <laughs> so, what, what are the that's what I'm going to? So, what are your challenges? Oh, my in the God, cause of what this? are my challenges? There are a lot. Give us a sneak peek into them money. Money, mm. the first one is money. Okay, yes, because every day I get calls. So, how do you generate from the inmates? Yes. Yeah, so they, they call in. So most of them are submitting business plans because I'm teaching them about <laughs> business. I'm teaching them about going into the world and, you know, just living life. Yes. Yeah. The so they want to do business. They want to learn. So I have a list of people mm. who want to do business. So I say, okay, fine. I'm going to take about five of you for now. Mm. Maybe after a few months, we can take another five. So we need money to be able to do this. Then when we talk about even the pro bono mm. cases, there were a lot of prisoners. Let me tell you the truth. The day that I went to the prison and I saw so many um, juveniles in court, I was like, oh my God, you know what? All of you come out, write your name on the list. I have my lawyers coming immediately. And that day, I had two lawyers go to prison to take their names and try to get them out. So this is in adding... In Lagos or in... In Lagos. Mm. So this now is... It was adding about seven names to my to already... To what you already had. Yeah. To what I already had, what I was dealing with already. You understand? Mm -hmm. So when we give them money to learn these vocational skills, mm -hmm. we, we, we get shot sometimes. We uh, make advertisements, send out adverts for partnerships, sponsorships, but we know how it is because these people, because we're dealing with prisoners, mm -hmm. so majority of people skeptical. say, yes, that these are wicked people, these are bad people, these are people that have done this and done that I'm not going to give. If you had, maybe if you were running a um, an orphanage family. home. A children's foundation? I would donate. Mm -hmm. But because you're running a prison ministry, I'm not going to give a dime. So we have a lot of people that say those things. So mm -hmm. we don't have so many sponsors. But so how do you know, generate income? <sighs> Manifield Solicitors has to provide funds for Bits by Money. Then we have just a few faithfuls. You know, so every month I have about two faithful people given towards the ministry mm -hmm. so just about two of them then what we do every christmas we have an annual um, christmas party for them just so that they feel like they're not missing out on anything mm. so then we have we really make calls for donations okay. most of the time we have about 50 people make donations for the annual party mm. yes and this year we plan to you know go, go out so for us this year is go big or go home mm. <laughs> so i'm excited yes. about this you mm. know so if somebody was watching now and they also want to be a part of it even mm -hmm. outside of the giveaway we're giving okay mm -hmm. we're saying if you know someone that is in prison wrongfully accused because we're mentioning this mm -hmm. again if you know somebody that is wrongfully accused please you know today you have a chance it is first come first serve but me i know they do rigging <laughs> they don't rig elections <laughs> if we see your case we'll take up the case but i think we should limit it to enugu and lagos right yes so that we focus lagos. Enugu, enugu and lagos mm -hmm. so for the people that are in enugu state and you're in Lagos State, and you know someone that is in prison now, they cannot afford, you know, for misdemeanor cases especially, and you cannot afford a solicitor, please send the message to the number. So I was going to say that, you know, um, as we, we are going through that, listen, how um, that journey where you talked about people not believing, because even me too, honestly, when I'm thinking of CSR, I'm not thinking prison at all. Because I just, yeah, so I understand the fact that there are loads of innocent people there, but my mind would not just go there first. I'll probably think of other things, children and all of that. So how do we start to reshape the minds of people? Because again, how is this impacting? If we say we truly want to do real, um, real, um, what's it called? Or real have life, real impact. No, real life transformation mm -hmm. where we're transforming the minds of these prisoners. Yeah. There should be an economic impact on the society. There should be a cultural impact. There should be a social impact on the society. We are, we are going to be making sure that the society is a lot better, right? So how do we start to reform the minds of people to start looking in that direction? To say, you know what, prisoners too, they matter in all of these things. Mm, okay, I want to ask a question. To answer your question, I'm going to ask a question. Um, how would you like to leave next door to um, an ex-con? An ex -con? Hmm. How would you like that? 
Would you be happy about that? Yeah, I'll have so, my reservations. Yes, you have your reservations. So if your answer is no, mm. would you feel better if you know that this prisoner was actually reformed before he was released? Mm. If we keep taking our hands off them and say, these are wicked people, these are dirty people, these are guilty people, who is going to reform them? We live in a country that has too many issues already. Mm. Nigeria has too many issues. The government is not a people's person. Mm. They are not a people's government. They are not thinking about the people. Even if they were thinking about the people, we still cannot leave everything to the government. But in our case, they are not even thinking about them. Who is going to think about them? Who is going to help them? Who is going to help change them? Who is going to reform them? Part of the services that um, I also provide is counseling. Most of them just want to talk. They already know that they are guilty. They already know they committed the crime. They want to talk because it's burning them. It's mm. killing them. They just want to They want a release. They want to unburden um, themselves. So when you partner with us, you help us to help more people yeah. so that when they come out into the society, there will be that seamless integration. And it's also, it's also going and to... And it impacts economically, okay, yeah. it impacts socially, mm. it impacts environmentally. Security-wise, it also yes. impacts. I was going mm. to say that, is there an approach to misdemeanor prisoners and probably these people that they know that they are guilty, they committed the crime, oh, yes. uh, maybe yes. murder and all of that. Is oh, there, yes. Do you have two different, different approach to those kinds of prisoners and you re you reach out to all right i reach out to everybody because mm. i don't believe that i believe in second chances and i don't think that a second chance means that you should go and correct what has been done mm. Mm. sometimes a second chance is just to give you another opportunity fresh to do better mm. you know so i'm not going to judge anybody who am i to judge anybody mm. we all have done different things that if we were caught probably we will be Danger. behind yes, yes because um like two years ago, I had the annual party um, in prison, like I told you about. And I had my printer go in to the prison with me. He wasn't even supposed to come in, but he brought some of the T-shirts because we print T-shirts. If you go to some of the prisons now, you will see Beats by Money. The, the prisoners, they're all wearing my shirts, Beats yeah. by Money. So he brought the things very late. So he just helped us to pack in and run in. While the service was going on, he saw somebody. He knew. He knew that they had been looking for on his streets oh for about two years. So, you know, he was like, I know that guy. That guy lives in my area. We thought he was dead. They have searched for him. They didn't find him. You know, and because of that, the guy could come out and, you know, he saved somebody because he went in with mm. me. So there are just a lot of things that we do with these people. So it's in the best interest of the public. To even partner with us because we help to bring these people into the society chain because we not only i talked about um, pro bono and helping them with businesses and you know counseling we also do spiritual um reformation spiritual transformation so we teach them the word of god we mm -hmm. teach them because most of these people are coming in without any values without any morals you understand we know that there's a big huge disparity between mm. the haves and the haves not in Nigeria. Mm. So the ones that don't have, they have no education, they have no skill set. Mm -hmm. What do they have in Nigeria? Mm. What do they have going for them? So the most the easiest thing for them to do is go into a life of crime. crime. Yes. So what do you do with these people who have no moral values? <laughs> you have to teach them. Mm. You understand? So we do a lot of we, we invest in them. That's the only way they will come out reformed. And wow. so from, from 2017, every single Thursday... Every Thursday we're in the prison. We're in the prison. It's, that, it's that, actually... That is dedication and commitment. Yes. If I, if I didn't think I was a dedicated, <laughs> loyal person, hmm. this um, outreach has what shown has me another part of motivation? myself. What has been motivation? I'm motivated by love. I'm motivated by compassion. Hmm. You know, so when you see most of them, I've had someone hold my hands and cry and tell me that I killed the person mm. that I'm being accused of killing. And he cried and I held his hand and you know, it, it's, it's just something you see Are a human being. Are you scared that they will attack you or I'm something? not scared at all. I go in, I go inside. Most of them call me the king of boys. Unfortunately, we can't show you pictures. <laughs> yes, we can't show you because, because in not prison, you're not allowed to, to take pictures. No, so the few not. pictures that we flashed, you know, were just 
you know yes, the ones that but, but there's one of the inmates mm. you know they just show them from the back so you're mm. not supposed to take their pictures from the front from because it. they have families yeah. and they're not trying to stigmatize them, them. Mm. yeah so we have them show the back of it so it's i'm so motivated i was going to say to you mm. that outside of um, so all of the things that you've done, what, what would you speak to with employers? Because I know that, um, for instance, that um, when people come out of prisons and they say, oh, I'm an S-con, uh, as an employer, <laughs> you'd be a bit jittery, you know, to, um, to what's it called, employing to employ them. those kind of people. So what would you say to employers, you know, mm. um, that, you know, at least they have the capacity to be able to employ yeah. those kind of people. Okay, what I would say is sensitize the public. Mm. You know, sometimes um, information is key. Knowledge, they say, is power. Mm. Sensitize them. Get the inmates to have someone reference them. Mm. I can actually reference some inmates. I, I have gone through your yes, program. Yes, I cannot reference some. Mm. You understand? So I have some that have been released. I don't even want to have anything to do with them because I just think they're not reformed they're yes. not yes. repentant i don't see any remorse in, in them and i believe they will still go out and commit the crime if given an opportunity mm. but there are some of them that i can quickly in a hurry reference mm. wow. so i would say that for um, people that are looking for jobs all they need is a reference from someone that is respectable and then yeah the um, people outside employers just need to know that these are human beings who have made mistakes so if you believe in second chances, then you hire them. Mm. You can watch them for a while. Mm. That's up to you, but you can, you know, just help. help so um, the question that Isi had asked earlier, that I said mm. we should suspend till much later about, mm. you know, reforming. Reforming. Yes, the reformation, reforming our prisons. What would you say about that? I would say that I am an advocate for prison reform. So I've actually written articles, you know, on prison reform, and I am trying my best to try to push it. Mm. You understand, because we are hungry for prison reform in Nigeria, especially when we know what can happen if this reformation is not done. Mm. Mm. Can you, yeah. Since you've written a lot of articles on it, can you give us a quick nuggets on you know, two or three points that they can actually use to you know, reform the prisons? Mm. More space. Mm -hmm. We need more space. We need to decongest our prisons. Mm. You understand there's so many people that are not supposed to be there get them out of there get them out of there mm. you understand imagine the one that i told you about that was in prison for two years that he mm. thought he was dead he was loitering we have <coughs> people <coughs> excuse me we have people like you said that they were in position um possession so of cannabis. Cannabis. cannabis for personal use personal use mean in small quantity mm. yes. if they're in possession of um, commercial like use, like when you say, yes. okay, fine, they have to do the time, five years, ten years. But in small quantity, let them go. Mm. So do you think the police has a huge role to play of in course. all of this? Because of they, course. they wouldn't have ended up in, in yes. that correction of They, 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 they the have place. a huge role to play because yes. most of the time, like um, three weeks ago when I saw the juvies there, mm. I went to talk to some of the um, prison right. was like, what are these guys doing here? They, they're not supposed to be here. The prison warders are tired of the police. Mm. They said the policemen keep just Pining bringing them, them paying them in. And they tell them, we don't even have the space. They say, just leave them here first. Oh, mm. my God. You know, so we have to address this issue. Yeah, I was going to say, finally, because mm. we ran out of time. We were having fun. <laughs> I have a comment, Yeah, you have though. a comment. Just hold on. I was going to say that, um, oh, now you're making me to lose my question. But yeah. the question is, you know how... Prisoners, people look forward to going to jail in, in, in abroad. Mm. Because you know, prisoners are treated with dignity and respect, right? Shouldn't that be part of what we're considering, even with, you know, as we're even looking forward to a new presidency, a new government, a new dispensation? Well, the can, we really, uh, can we achieve a decent lifestyle for a prisoner? Is it possible? Is it achievable? In quote, in Nigeria. Nothing is impossible. Mm. Mm. But in Nigeria, where we have our systems backwards, <laughs> it becomes highly impossible. Absolutely. Yes. So the countries you're talking about is because they are presumed innocent until proven guilty. Mm. Nigeria is backwards. Quickly. Yeah. Okay, see. They are guilty <laughs> before they are proven innocent. Okay, yeah. so my, my uh, comment is, good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Hashtag ways. As regards the giveaway Wednesday, shining the light on prisoners, 
to be honest and sincere, my dear beautiful sister and guest, Manny Money, is doing a very good job. And God bless her greatly and abundantly. For God using her to put smiles on the faces of the prisoners, I also pray that God will strengthen her concerning the task and projects she has in her hands. I know that it is not easy, but with God, <laughs> all things are possible. My dear sister, Manny, Manny, you look beautiful and lovely. God bless you, and I pray that God will use uh, people to make themselves available to assist you Amen. in this project. My name is Daniel Ilo. Thank you so thank much, you, Daniel. Daniel. Unfortunately, we ran out of time. Thank you, no, but Thank you so much, Manny. Mm -hmm. We're looking forward to partnering with you. Um, I know we cannot take the cameras there, but we're, we're planning the big um, yeah, December, December party. party. So yes. hopefully we'll would come in, we'll wear the t-shirt, and we we'll do all the things that we need to do. But for mm -hmm. those that want to, um, before we go, ensure you follow us on Instagram at Wayshow Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment. And more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and follow the conversation. Now, um, if you know anyone who fits this um, CSR, who would benefit from today's CSR, um, today's giveaway, please um, watch this again, just so you know how you can apply for it it's, it's a simple thing your full name and just put a slash giveaway so we know that then we'll send your details to manny's lawyers and they will reach out to you maybe you watch this Now, if you missed today's quote, here it is again. No one should ever be wrongfully deprived of their rights to liberty and freedom without just cause. Yet, in the past 25 years alone, thousands of people have been wrongfully convicted and sentenced to ten, uh, tens of thousands of years in prison. This is a reality that we are facing and we are hoping that, you know, this is just the beginning. We are also doing our own part. If you want to partner with us, just reach out to us as well. We'll see you guys live at 8 p.m. tomorrow as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. <laughs>